This is a video lecture for Math 181 for Friday, April 17th, and the topic is the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Section 5.3. This is the first part of the video, and I'll also have a second part. Um, so if you think about uh, differentiation and integration, I want to consider these two terms. Uh, differentiation and integration. Okay, differentiation is where we take the derivative of a function, which is the slope of that function um, at, at a particular point. Integration is where we find the area uh, under, the, under a curve. Okay, these two uh, processes are uh, inverse operations of each other. Um, so these two processes are inverse processes. What does that mean? It's just a fancy way of saying is one undoes the other. One undoes the other. In other words, if you took a derivative of an integral, so if we took a derivative d dx of the integral from 0 to t to x, excuse me, 0 to x of f of t dt, this would just equal f of x. Okay, so don't get too concerned about the x's and the t's here. What this is just saying is, if you, if you take a derivative of an integral, the, the derivative undoes the integration and just spits back out your f of x. In other words, if you, if you dug a hole and then you filled it back in with dirt, one would operation would undo the other. So differentiation undoes integration. And that brings us to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, if you're integrating, let's suppose you're, you're integrating, you're doing a definite integral of a function. Okay, what does this mean again? What it means is I'm finding the exact area under the curve under, under this function from the point A to point B. What this equals is it equals F, capital F of B minus capital F of A where, where F is said is the, and here's a fun word, the anti-derivative of small f of x, where f is the antiderivative of small f of x. And what that means, that means, what that means is f prime of x equals f of x. So f, f, capital F is the antiderivative of small f of x, meaning that capital F is a function whose derivative equals small f of x. So this, what it, what's the point of this? This is a way we can actually evaluate integrals. Okay, we want to figure out what's the area under a curve. We want to evaluate this integral. Okay, we don't want to have to go through the nightmare we did last class where we did this really complicated Riemann sum. That that's the hard way. That's like building a house uh, with with a screwdriver or digging a foundation with a screwdriver. Okay, so this is a much easier way to do this, as you guys will see. So. What we want to do is we want to find the particular function, the antiderivative of this function, whose derivative is equal to this function itself. Okay? And that might confuse you guys. I hope you're not too confused. I'm going to consider a couple examples. Okay? Uh, so let's consider some examples. Consider four examples. I'll do one example in this video and then three more in the next one. Okay, so the first example is let's, let's say we want to find the area under this curve. So we want to find 0 to 3 of f of x, where in this case f of x is x squared. Okay? So I want to, I want to find the area under this curve, which is, f, which is x squared dx. So this means that my, my small f of x is x squared. I want to find the area under this parabola from 0 to 3. By the fun fundamental theorem of calculus, this equals, this equals capital F of 3 minus capital F of 0. Okay, and now the trick is, I need to find a function. I need to find a function, so I need to find, need to find an F of capital F of X such that the derivative of capital F of X equals x squared, which is my original function under the integral sign. So I need to find, basically I need to find the antiderivative 
of x squared. Okay. So the real question is, can you guys think of a function where if we take the derivative of that function, we get x squared? And this is a little bit like going backwards. It's easy to take a derivative of a function. It's hard to guess a function whose derivative equals this function. So it's kind of like you're, you're sort of working backwards. You're like a detective. But uh, if we're clever, we can do this. And, and I'm going to suggest... I'm going to suggest that f of x equals x cubed over 3, okay? Let's just guess. Let's say, suppose f of x were x cubed over 3, and then I take the derivative, I take the derivative of this function, and if I get that, I bring the 3 down, so I get 3 times x squared over 3, okay? And it turns out these 3's cancel, and I get just x squared. So yes. I, I indeed, I found, I was clever, and I found a function whose derivative is equal to this, to this function, x squared. But the fundamental theorem of calculus, then, the integral from 0 to 3 of x squared dx will simply equal f, capital F, of 3 minus capital F of 0, where capital F is the antiderivative of small f of x. And we, now we know what the antiderivative is, so what we do to evaluate this is we plug in 3 for x, right? Because that's our capital F. We get 3 squared cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. And this gives us, uh, what does this give us? 27 over 3, which equals 9. Okay, so this, this is pretty cool. This is our answer. This is the exact area under this curve from 0 to 3 of x squared. And we did this by, find, by being clever and finding the antiderivative of f of x. Okay, so this is how we evaluate an integral. And uh, more generally speaking, more generally, what if you guys had the integral from a to b of x to the n dx? So instead of having x squared, let's say you just had a polynomial, right? Now, can you guys guess, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this equals the f, capital F of b, minus capital F of a, where f, where f, capital F, is the antiderivative of x to the n. So we need to find, we need to find a function f of x such that f, the derivative of f, capital F of x, equals x to the n. Can we find that function? So what's the antiderivative of the function x to the n? Well, here's a good guess. And so you might not know how to guess this, but you just, after a while, you figure out a good guess. What if x, f of x were x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1? What if that were true? Then, if I took the derivative here, f prime of x, I would bring down an n plus 1. So I get an n plus 1 here. I reduce this power by 1. I get an x to the n over n plus 1. Okay. These n plus 1s cancel, and I just get x to the n. All right, I'm happy about that, because I've now found my antiderivative. So more generally, more generally, if you had any function x to the n, the antiderivative of that function will always be x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. For example, if I gave you guys the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the fifth dx, okay, What's the antiderivative of that? What is the capital F of x whose derivative is equal to x to the fifth? Use this formula. That's going to be x to the n plus 1. 5 plus 1 is 6, divided by 6. If you're not sure if this is correct, take the derivative of this, and you'll get back x to the fifth. So this is the antiderivative of x to the fifth. Um, so that's generally true for any power. That's the end of part one of this video. In part two, I'm going to do a couple more example problems.